Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on Canadian MJ. We have a whole bunch of names to look at, but first things first, I'm going to go over what my thoughts are on Canopy and Acreage and apply this intro to the US MJ video as well, a little bit of a repeat, because it applies to both. And I'm gonna do that video tomorrow. So first things first, CGC, we need to be distinguished very clearly here. They have not bought Acreage. They have made a deal that when we have full federal legalization in the United States, that there is a deal for CGC to buy Acreage. Another big note is that Canopy, Bruce, the CEO, said that they are have been exploring a bunch of MSOs, multi-state operators. They've been looking at six and they're still in talks with about three others. So there's a couple things to take away from this. Number one, CGC is actively and aggressively going after US multi-state operators and they're trying to lock in deals ahead of the game early. Number two, individual MSOs now are looking, their price just accrued in terms of their value, in my opinion, because they are looking to, their their premiums are going to be paid if there are deals over what their current share prices are, and there is incentive for people to try and get in looking for the next name to get bought out. That being said, a lot of people want to see their individual US MJ names stay independent. The reason being, this is a huge market. The floodgates aren't even close to opening at this point. And there could potentially be more value staying independent than there would be just being bought up for whatever premium. And that makes sense to me. So let's say IAN right now and IAN from its current price, if we had a deal come out and let's say they got paid 30%, 40% premium over what their shares are now. Do you think that IAN as an individual company is there, if their share price is going to be more than 40% from where we stand right now, if we get federal legalization? And my answer is yes, absolutely, because I believe there's going to be other hurdles to get over first, whether it's the Safe Banking Act, whether it's, you know, federal medical legalization. I think that those steps are going to continue to see bullish action in the market. And I think that the gains would be more significant for the individual name as opposed to getting bought up by CGC, the shareholders getting shares of CGC as a result. And then now you're, you're tied to what CGC is doing. So obviously, if those events occur in the U.S. market, and in the US government, essentially, then CGC is going to benefit from that and the price is going to go up. But we have illiquidity, a lack of liquidity. We're not traded on major exchanges. And I think that the percentage gains of individual USMJ names has more reward potential if they are individuals and if hedge funds and everybody is going to be piling into these individual names on any kind of major political news. I think that the, the risk to reward scenario is better staying individual. To move CGC 10%, you have to see massive news or massive volume to do so. And to move these MSOs, these individual companies 10%, not nearly as much. So that's an argument for the benefits of staying independent as a company and not getting bought up by CGC. So we're gonna have to see how it's gonna play out. Some names are gonna get bought up. Some names are gonna stay independent. Some names are gonna partner with alcohol companies. Some names are gonna partner with beverage companies. There's it, there's so many ways that this is gonna play out. Number the, the bottom line is it's bullish, we know that. So why did Acreage and CGC go down today? Well, CGC went down because it went nuts after hours and it went nuts during trading today. We went up to 47 and beyond. So from where we closed yesterday, that's a massive over a 10% move. And again, the size of the market cap here on CGC for that kind of gap up, the number one bottom line is this deal, this potential deal could be two years down the line. So if you see a 10% gap up open on news that might not have any implications for two years, and again, Safe Act doesn't do anything for this deal. Nothing does anything for this deal unless it's full legalization. Free news just came out. Cannabis cultivation license in Germany. We'll see if that has a reaction after hours. So 10% gap up open on news that is nowhere near imminent on the horizon. 
people are going to take profit. Acreage, why in the world did we see a red close or a close at the high of yet or right where we closed yesterday? Number one, insiders loaded up yesterday. You go 14% on a day with no news. Yes, it was a bullish day for the sector as a whole. If you give it five, six, 7%, sure, it's in line with everybody else. But you go 14%, something's up. Very clearly, insider trading was going on. That means people are loading up with the intention of selling the gap up open the following day. A lot of people had that in their game plan to capitalize on the early information. So the deal is for 40% premium over the 30-day average of the price. And again, double check me on all my details. And if I am wrong on any of this stuff, by all means, let's discuss it in comments. But I want to look at the 30-day average volume of what ACRG's price is. Because that tells me the 40% premium over that level is what the deal is for. So that 30-day average is $20.40. So where we started yesterday was already, we closed at $22.49. We are already 9% above the measurement, the 30-day moving average of what the premium is. So we're up 9% over that level. And let's just see where we were at the high of today. So high of today compared to, my tool's not working. The bottom line is we made a 40% move in eight hours of trading on ACRG on a deal that is not having anything to do with anything in the near term. It's six months down the line. It's 18 months down the line. It's three years down the line. We have no idea. And people are going to take profit. The people that got in early, we had a total of a 40% move from the low of yesterday at the open to the high of today. That's a 40% move. And that is pretty much a 35% move over what the 30-day average is. So we got real close at the high of the day to what the premium would be of this deal. And then we saw all that profit taking as people are going to lock in profit. Gap up opens in general are for selling. There's some instances where that's not the case, but the vast majority of the time, or I shouldn't say the vast majority, but more than half the time, if you're selling the gap up open, you're locking in profit with the ability to reload cheaper. So that's my spiel. Now let's get into regular technical analysis. And we'll start it off with CGC. So CGC had the gap up open. I personally sold the shares that I had of CGC last night after hours at 47, 40 something. And then reloaded at the end of the day down at 44.60. So that was a longer term position, a swing position, not a day trade position that I had. And it was in a, a company account for the chart guys. And I sold that because of it was a short squeeze reaction. 10% move on that news is very unlikely to hold the entirety of the rest of the day, the following day. And I was very comfortable locking in that big profit, knowing that I would likely be able to get a chance to reload cheaper. So if I'm looking longer term and I sell and I'm looking to reload, anything that's cheaper is a win. If I sell at 47.45 and I reload at 47.35, I win because I just took money off the table for the same amount of shares, or I load more shares for the same amount of money, whatever my game plan is. So to be able to reload one day later and get a 5%, pretty much take 5% of the cash off the table, get the same amount of shares, that is a, an ideal. That's how I trade swing positions when I see clear signals. So if we didn't see anywhere near as significant a gap up, if we saw a bull move up to 44, 45, I wouldn't have thought of selling. And I had no intention of selling until I saw, okay, this is getting way too extreme. And once we saw that next $3 move after hours, I locked that in and didn't look back. So that's my strategy personally when I'm looking at a swing position. I want to hold it longer term. But if you are staring me glaring in the face with a clear opportunity, I'm going to shift my game plan and take that opportunity. I had no intention of flipping CGC yesterday after the bell rang until this news event happened. So where we stand now... The good thing for the bulls is we did finally close over the daily exponential resistance, which had continually been rejecting the price. And APHA is seeing a little bit of act action after hours on that news. But we need to find a, a new support level. Essentially, we had a double top. And this is why looking, if you're trading WEED and you're not watching CGC, if you're trading any individual name and not watching both names on the dual listed tickers, you're at a disadvantage. Hexo, I'll show you an example why the US was beautiful for setups. And here for CGC as well, as soon as we could not break 47.87, the high of after hours, 
That's the sell signal. We're not going to go any higher. We're going to see profit taking from here. And we ended up seeing very significant profit taking. So clear resistance. We rejected by 16 cents. We pulled back. We had an hourly inside bar. It broke bearish. And we pulled back hard here at the end of the day. And it's a potential bear flag at the end of the day. We changed the five minute trend with no follow through. Bulls here wanted to get into the mid 45s after breaking 44.88 and changing the five minute trend. And they didn't do so. We saw some profit taking at the end of the day, and it is a potential hourly bear flag. If we break 44.16, we look to 43.23 and further gap fill. The gap would fill at 43.28 if we do keep consolidating into Monday. Reminder, we're not trading tomorrow. <clears throat> There's potential that this news circulates over the next three days, four days, three days, and potentially could lead to a little bit of buying pressure on Monday, but we need a new support level established and pretty much anything above 4033 is a higher low. This changes the shape of the monthly pattern. Bulls are we're really hoping that this is a monthly bull flag and that our higher low has already formed. But because of the selling pressure we saw today, we can't be confident in that. We have to see number one, a daily trend change with a higher low and then a higher high. And number two, we need to see the weekly chart change trend. From this bounce of the low of 39.66, anything under 48.60 is just a lower high. And we topped out under that level. So we are technically still setting weekly lower highs as well. The question that I'm going to have is how can the bulls recover from this? Can we pull back, establish a new support level and make a move back up into the upper 40s? And I do expect to, to trade within a range that we're going to establish over the next two days, probably for the next week plus. So we have our high of the reaction. We don't have a confident low of the reaction yet because we closed weak. If we closed in the middle of the candlestick today, our range would be set, but we're not confident in that low yet. So once we establish a support level and clearly shift the hourly momentum in favor of the bulls, we'll have a low to be watching. And from there, we will anticipate an equilibrium setup. And right now I'm trying to find the time frame that's gonna be most clear. And if we can hold 44.16 Monday morning, we're gonna look for a bounce and a lower high compared to 46.65 and a tightening range. If we can't hold that support, 43.23, but I have a feeling that after about Monday or Tuesday, we will see a clear range established, high of the reaction, low of the profit taking from the reaction, and then we'll look to trade within that range for a while. All in all, it's bullish longer term, but again, short-term implications, really not significant for me personally. And another question is, is it opening up the doors for all these other companies, Cron, ACB, APHA, to start making their deals with other MSOs, pretty much setting the stage for as soon as legalization does occur, that these deals will go through. And I do expect other names to emulate what CGC is doing here with acreage. Cron, gap up for selling. It's a weak bounce attempt. Anything under 1814 was just a lower high. We closed at the low of the day. The bears are still in complete control of this chart and we're close to daily oversold. If we drop down and break 1547, we'll have another leg down and we'll be looking at 15 psychological as the next support after that. And it looks like our new daily resistance level probably going to be 1712, the high of today. ACB, still grinding this resistance. Like I said, bulls are doing a good job of playing defense, but they are not playing any offense. We have resistance at 914, and it's now a quadruple top. 913, 14, 14, and 12. Four out of the last seven days, we've topped out at those levels. Still held on, it's a daily inside bar, but we have to break 916, 914, and break all these levels at once, and then ideally break the double top at 930 after it if we're going to get some significant follow through. If we break 914 and 930, our weekly higher low will be set, and we'll be looking back up towards the $10 range, towards the upper $9 range, mid $9 range, 948 is a resistance level after that. But that would be the first shift in momentum back to the bulls since consolidation from 1032 started, as we have not broken any resistances since that point. So still holding on, if we break the inside bar bearish under 892, we're going to come down and have to hold 845 to try and form a higher low on the daily chart. APHA, pain continues, higher open, drop to lower lows. We still have not set a bottom for a bearish reaction to earnings and to that deal that was announced, the financing deal. We are close to oversold. We have 755 as support, the weekly chart, breaking all support levels established over the last few months. And now we're looking down at 698 
as the next weekly support level. Again, the monthly time frame lower high established, and I do anticipate a higher low on the monthly compared to 375 as bulls still have so much space to work with. So worth watching for an oversold bounce. Didn't get the gap down open, so I wasn't interested in APHA today. If we were to see a gap down open on Monday, I would get interested, but you can see the RSI, people would call this a bull divergence of the RSI because the RSI is setting a higher low and trying to set a higher high while the price is going in the opposite direction. But my point is that we have cooled off RSI levels and you can see the, the RSI cools off in extended hours and then drops down and then the price drops down during regular trading hours. Most of the bounces that have occurred on APHA have all been during extended hours. Bears have controlled after the bell rings. TLRY looks like a daily bear flag. Weak bounce attempt. Anything under 57.54 was just a lower high. And we did drop down to a lower low under 48.56. So we did drop to a lower low. No follow through for the bears at this point. So the bulls have to show up and defend this support level again on Monday. But if not, we're looking at another leg down and the next support level there's actually a gap at 44.37 that we are watching if we break this support level more convincingly. Trying to hold it here at the end of the day. Weak bounce attempt. Not really that much going on for the bulls. Bears still control the daily chart here. So Cron, APHA, TLRY, all still weak where we stand right now. And again, it was just another just separating day where the USMJ multi-state operators held on way better than the Canadian MJ names. There was fading everywhere from people taking profit. We were taking a lot of profit in the chat room in the first half hour of trading today. And I'll talk about that more in depth when we talk about the USMJ video, but the Canadian names faded even more significantly than US. OGI. So anything under 940 was just a daily lower high. Looks like our daily lower high is set at 919. Now the bulls have to come down and hold 840 and then turn around and break 919 to change the daily trend and to try and give us this weekly new support level off of exponential support. So the bulls still have work to do. This was a solid bounce from the low to the high. We made a, a nice 10% move, 9% move. But if we're going to change this daily trend, we have to hold support and then turn around and break resistance. TRST is a day. <clears throat> Excuse me. TRST is a daily bear flag setup. Anything under nine, make that 1041, is just a lower high. This is a weak bounce attempt with the hourly trend change and no follow through due to the gap up open and the profit taking on the gap up open. Again, just rule of thumb, gap downs are for buying, gap ups are for selling. There are definitely individual variables that will change that. For example, a lot of USMJ names yesterday gapped up open. Why weren't we selling then? Because they were coming from big sell-offs, some of them coming from daily oversold conditions, and that was just the start of the bounce. So that's not the kind of gap up open for selling, but if you get two of those in a row, which we did, that changes things. So for TRST, it is a bear flag on the daily. The next support, aside from the low of today, we've got 936 and 907, break at 907, and we're pretty much for sure going to confirm that bear flag. But if we can form a higher low compared to 907, we'll then look for a bounce and an hourly lower high compared to 994. Question is, when can we establish a support level for all these weak names that saw profit taking all day? We don't have a clear base of support established for us to be looking for a bounce and a lower high to be set because we ran out of time at the end of the day before any meaningful bounce took place. So here's Hexo. So this is what I'm talking about with USMJ names compared to Canadian. If we're looking at the Canadian MJ name, we have a gap up open. There's no real price levels nearby. And if we look at the US ticker, look at how much more clear a setup this is looking at extended hours. We had the high of after hours of 725. That is our resistance that we need to be watching. We had the low of pre-market of 672. That's a key level as well. High of after hours, low of pre-market. We then failed to break the high of after hours with the high of pre-market. So that's a lower high. And then look at the support, 672 pre-market, 672, 674. We grinded against this support. So we could see a rejection from resistance from the high of pre-market, first thing. And then we could see support holding. We maybe could have played a trade off of that 672 support. We did have bouncing a percent or two off of that level but then inevitably broke it. The bottom line is there's more levels to look at. There's more relevant levels and it gives a better visual guide to the setup. For example, 
672. It's a double bottom on the US side. And if you're looking at that on the Canadian side, that low of the day came out of nowhere. That 927 level, why, or that it wasn't 927, it was nine psychological. Okay, nine psychological, that makes sense as well. So a little bit easier because it was that nice round psychological number. So not an ideal example. But if that was a number just floating in space, it wouldn't make any sense why we're holding that support. And the US side would have showed us why that support was holding with the pre-market trading. So Hexo on the daily, gap up open second in a row. So again, bearish action where we're seeing four, six, eight, 10 of 12 days red. So the gap up open after 10 of 12 days red is the kind of scenario that could squeeze some shorts. So if we have shorts in this trade and we see a gap up open, we know there's shorts in this trade because the price is weak. That can trap some shorts and add some fuel. So we're not going to sell a gap up open that's coming from a lot of weakness. Now, if you're seeing a second gap up open in a row where shorts have already covered, where bulls are going to be looking to lock in profit, it's a different setup. So the amount of the bounce that we've seen on Hexo, the bulls have tons of space to form a daily higher low. And we're going to have to break 875 on Monday to even indicate that daily consolidation is coming because we do still have a, I wouldn't call it an hourly uptrend, not clear, but the bottom line is it's still a higher low and higher high each day. And to start to see daily consolidation, we would have to break that pattern. So if we don't break 875, the bulls are still following through with their bounce. And if we do, we need to form the higher low and change the daily trend to be looking back at the 970 recent high. Very healthy weekly consolidation. Higher low is confidently formed at 786. And now it's just a question of whether we can get that break of 970 to get the continuation for weekly follow through. VFF, so nice follow through for the bulls on the bounce, obviously, very big victory for the bulls. But this is where we were looking for a lower high to form compared to where we were before that tweet. So the key resistance was 1762. I believe that was the resistance level that I highlighted in the video yesterday, expecting that would be a level we form a lower high compared to, and then talking about the four hour equilibrium to watch the setup from there. So we rejected from that resistance by 22 cents. And now if we see a bear break of 1580 on Monday, which is the low of consolidation at this point, if 1580 breaks, we have our four hour equilibrium setup, and we'll look for a higher low to form in the perhaps around $15 for a tightening four hour range. So I look at the daily chart and it's a bit choppy. I know that it's just a daily lower high and the bears still have control of the trend. But if I want clarity, it's all on the four hour time frame for me. And it's just a question of 1580 on Monday, whether that level breaks and we do get the four hour equilibrium following through or not. T God on the daily is still weak. If you have an individual name that the last two days did not respond to either the USMJ strength or this news where the sector had a significantly higher open, that's a red flag. Something's up with that. And that's obviously not what we want to be, see as bulls. If we see the sector doing good things and our money in whatever ticker we're in is not doing good things, we are having opportunity cost and missing out on other plays. So I see a lot of long-term traders or long-term investors. And if that's your strategy, that's fine. You know, buy and don't touch it. But when you see that happening on a play like APHA, you can be long the fundamentals of APHA and think it's going to be a powerhouse and want to play it. But again, missing out on this opportunity of names that are breaking out and running, if you were less attached to it and were trading some of the momentum, then you would have more money to buy cheaper shares. Not only would your money be dis not be disappearing to the downside, you could be increasing money and then building bigger positions. So again, just the ability to recognize trends, recognize momentum, recognize where money is going to be working best for us is the name of the game as traders or investors. So TGOT is very weak. We're down at the low, down at 390. That's the only short-term support. After 390, it's 385 and then 364 after that. And there's just no sign of the bulls at this point. Lower high at 413, lower high at 408, broke support of 392, key support test of 390 coming Monday. CXXI, a weak bounce attempt, anything under 198 is just a daily lower high. If we lose the hourly uptrend, our daily lower high will be established, but we have not lost that hourly uptrend yet. Bulls want to form a new support level, ideally at 168, but that means the bulls have to show up first thing Monday to follow through off of that support. 178 is resistance, 
If we bounce Monday, don't break 178 and then come down and break 168, we lose the hourly uptrend, our new daily lower high is set, and we have to form a higher low compared to the recent low of 141 and then change the trend that way. NRTH, a bounce that's just forming a daily lower high compared to 124. If we lose everything that I just said applies, if we lose the hourly uptrend, our daily lower high is likely set. Bulls have to come down, hold 85 cents, and then change the trend. Hourly higher low is at $1. If we lose $1 on Monday, the odds that our daily lower high is set and we have to pull back and form a new support compared to 85 cents will increase a good bit. Tilt had a huge move today, but it was very short-lived. Again, anything under 320 is a daily lower high. Hourly time frame, we're going to be looking for, we got our high, low of the pullback, and I'm looking at resistance of 247 and 260, and anything under 247, we're going to have an hourly equilibrium. So if we can't break 247 on Monday, look for a pullback and an hourly higher low compared to 221. Labs, so... It's a shift in the subsectors here. So we got subsectors developing. The extraction subsectors were running hot to start the week. They saw profit taking. I have no doubt that that profit taking went into the subsector of US MSOs. And we can't just say USMJ because KSHB and these other names are not MSOs, multi state operators, but they are USMJ. So we do have to distinguish between that subsector. And I don't have any doubt that extraction profit was going to US MSOs the last two days while we saw profit taking for two days. So we're looking for a daily higher low to form. The 12 period exponential support on the daily is a level I keep highlighting as a visual guide to be watching on these uptrends. Anything above 424 is a higher low. We need to change the hourly trend back to the bulls by holding 481 and breaking 563 to change the hourly trend, give us our daily higher low, and try and make our way back to resistance because we have pulled back so significantly from resistance even if we do change that hourly trend we're still going to look for a lower high on the daily compared to 652 because at this point from the low of consolidation to see continuation it would require a 37 percent move that's a pretty hefty bill for the bulls to fill oils Oil's daily high or low, right off the 12 period daily exponential support. Again, I didn't use this exponential moving average before cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency was a major hype euphoric market and it worked really well. And I'm seeing it work really well in hype euphoric markets. And oils and labs are really good examples. Right off that level, has the hourly trend changed? No, it has not. We're coming right off the low. Actually, you could say this is a low, a high, there's our brief little higher low. And again, with penny stocks, it's a little bit trickier because every penny level is a distinct, clear level of support or resistance normally. So we could call that an hourly trend change. The bounce is certainly very significant. And we did close at the high of the day. Resistance is 62 and 68, the double top. And anything above 51 keeps the bulls comfortable with an hourly higher low. But a really strong daily trend still. Question will be, can we break 68 Monday or Tuesday? VGW. So VGW is more of an equilibrium, different setup. I've got a high of 405, a low of 352, calling the lower high at 399, and we need a higher low compared to 352. I'm ignoring this candlestick because this is the first candlestick of the day when the volatility is the wildest and we set a, a high and a low, and then I'm just disregarding that. And really, if I went to the two hour chart, let's see if we can get a little bit more smooth. Maybe it's the four hour. No, don't like it anywhere. But that's again, if I gave a textbook rule of what a trend is, you would look at this and say, well, we lost the uptrend or it wouldn't fit. But this is where, you know, having some leeway as a technical analyst, I can look at this and based on my interpretation and my preference, I am disregarding this candlestick. I'm not disregarding those levels. If we drop down, I am going to watch 358 as a level. But as far as shaping up of the equilibrium, I am ignoring that candlestick, high, low, lower, high, and we're looking for a higher low compared to 352. So keep an eye on the VGW hourly time frame for that tightening range. And last, KHRN, getting a bounce going, closed up near the high of the day, but anything under 368 or 374, 374 is more clear, but again, by definition, 368 would be a potential lower high as well. 
So either way, those two resistance levels, anything under it is a daily lower high. And when we lose the hourly uptrend, that will be confidence that our daily lower high is set. Anything above 313 keeps the bulls in full control. If we break 323 on Monday, next level will be up at 347. So bulls do still have space, but again, we will have to set a daily lower high, come down and set a higher low, and then change the daily trend in order to be confident that the momentum has shifted and that we are forming a monthly higher low. That's where we stand. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of opportunity out there. And again, I want to talk a little bit about, what do I want to talk about? Opportunity. So I've been trading marijuana penny stocks for nine years at this point, just under nine years. I have seen hype markets come. I would say this is the the fifth hype market, fourth hype market. There have been plenty of little 100% hype markets, multiple 100% hype markets in the penny stock world, but the big one, the thousand plus percent gains, 2013, 2014, marijuana penny stocks. Canada, hype market on the election. Second hype market for Canada was the day leading up to sales, that whole bull run that we had, massive gains for the Canadian MJ players. And now we are seeing a USMJ hype market. This is the fourth one. The USMJ market is going to have multiple hype cycles. We have multiple catalysts. None of the major catalysts have gone through yet as far as sparking massive short-term euphoria gains. We know CNBP, CNBC is going to pump things. We know the gains going to bring out the herd and the euphoria and all that. It's going to happen multiple times. It's going to happen when there is significant catalyst, fundamentally speaking, and in the government, politically speaking. So in this time... Learning is so essential. I cannot tell you how much less money I would be making right now if this was my first hype market. Because this is my fourth hype market that I've traded, even going back to crypto, I traded crypto, so that's my fifth hype market. And if you gave me cryptocurrency as my first market, I would have made so much less money and I would have given back so much more money that it's, it's not even comparable applying the skills that you learn and the lessons that you learn and the mistakes that you make throughout these hype markets make you ready for the next one. There's always going to be hype markets for something. We're going to be trading something in five years that isn't even on our minds right now. Some new technology, some whatever. It's the way markets and human emotion work. So if you're putting in the work now and you're accruing capital, again, I've been saying this for a while, do the odd jobs, hustle, get your entrepreneurial game on, build your capital base to be able to implement and apply your capital when you see fit into these hype markets, being aggressive, compound your profits, and change your financial life. That was a ramble. I have more to say. We'll leave it there. Check out the USMJ video. Again, I'm still blown away the USMJ videos are getting considerably less views than the Canadian MJ videos. I guess that might just be people that are long-term holding and not trading and I don't know, but you don't want to be missing out on the USMJ opportunity. The shift clearly happened a month or two ago, and it's going to be a fun ride for the next few years. Have a great day. Do good things. I got my ladybugs. I keep doing things and then forgetting my camera. So see ya. So picking back up on Adventure Time, heading up the East Coast from Florida. It is August, was August, five years ago. And destination was the Northeast. I believe I was going to a friend's wedding. I grew up in Massachusetts and the foliage was about to be popping off in New England. So heading back up for there and making my way along the coast as we go with some beautiful flowers. Thought this was a cool shot of the diversity. This was all in my campsite, all the different kinds of algae and moss and lichen and cool different colors, cool different shapes, orange, blues, purples, teals, greens, all breaking down wood. And one of my favorite facts is that trees were around before fungi, and I might be getting it wrong, it's either the bacteria that break down trees or the fungi that break down trees didn't exist when trees were thriving and so trees would fall and die and then they would just lay there and nothing was breaking them down and turning them into soil. So certainly a different
kind of world back then. This giant wasp took out a giant cicada right in front of my face as I was walking down the trail. I believe this is in Kentucky at this point. I like bugs. These are furnaces from the 1700s for metalworking. Just these big stone structures that allow the heat to get trapped, to get hot enough to be able to work with metals. So that was pretty cool. This is in, uh, oh man, what is the name of this? Fredericks, Fort Fredericks. I should have checked beforehand, but Fort Fredrickson, something along those lines. I think it's Virginia. I like the stuff from the 17, 1800s. I grew up with my grandparents living in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the site of the famous Civil War battle, and I've been going there. I've, I've been there 30, 40 times in my life or more. And so we got all that history, all the battlefield tours, the ghost walks and all of that stuff. So it definitely still interests me. But a cool big old fort with big walls still around 250 years later or so. So this was just, I think it's a state park. And I was just around hanging around there. And I did go back up through Pennsylvania. And this is the front page of the Gettysburg Times, I believe it's what it's called. Local farmer finds mutant ear of corn. The happy guy, there's his 15 minutes of fame, Ben Clunk. Three-headed ear of corn, front page of the newspaper. It's a simpler place. Then I hopped on the AT trail just for a couple nights. There's your shelter. And heading up now as the leaves were continually changing to the White Mountains of New Hampshire, my old stomping grounds. That's where my dad used to originally take us camping, and that's where I started to fall in love with nature. If you have children, take your children camping in a tent. RVs are cool, but take your children camping in a tent. It will probably change their life. And I'm 30 years old, and I can think back 25 to 20 years ago and how much of an impact that had on me and how it sparked my love for camping and how I then use that passion to road trip around the country and experience all these things because I was comfortable doing so because I had an adult show me the way and show me how to do these things. And if I had never camped, it's probably, you know, if you never camp and you're all of a sudden 30 years old, it's probably hard to get comfortable and to get into doing it consistently. Take your kids camping. Even if it's in the backyard, it's an adventure. It's fun. You can bond and roast s'mores and have a fire. Teach your kid how to make a fire. All good stuff. That's the advice for today. We'll see you next time.